everyone. I'm so glad to see you back. Today, um, I have a few things that we have to uh, talk about. When we're filming this, my black 301A, that was my mom's machine, is going back to the spa for her yearly checkup. So we don't have any free motion quilting to do. Because this one, and this happens with the same kind of machines, that everybody and you know any quilter that's been quilting for quite a while knows is that some machines just don't like to they'll quilt this way but they won't quilt this way and this is one of those machines so we have to change plans so what my plan is to show you is one of my favorite blocks for scrap busting now this block became so popular with some of my friends that we called it the potato chip block because you remember the potato chip uh, commercial that says good luck just eating one well good luck just making one these go together very quickly and they're a lot of fun and I'm just so happy you're joining us today so I can show you the potato chip block okay so we're at the sewing machine and I just want to show you how I've got this laid out on my on my uh, design board it, lo it looks big, but this thing finishes at 12 and a half inches. And it doesn't look like all the pieces fit together, but trust me, they do. I'll put the cutting instructions for the bricks in the show notes below. But these are only uh, two, 2 inch by 3 and a half inch. You can also make this block with um, 2 and a half by 4 and a half inch blocks, right? So how this works is you sew from the middle and then to the outsides and then these ones and you go out and you know you keep go you keep moving out as you build your block this block is very forgiving and it does it's a great scrap buster now what has happened in my stash is I had I've cut my my scraps into one and a half two inch and two and a half inch strips but I had to separate out the part strips from the full strips because it was taking me forever to find full strips there was one day I needed a project and I had this great idea but I needed full strips well it took me three hours to go through all those strips to find enough full strips so this is why we decided from now on we're separating we're keeping them separate so what I did in order to get enough variety in my blocks that I was doing is I went through and I cut up all those part strips into three and a half inch bricks or rectangles. So I'm going to show you how we're going to sew these together. And with this block, the more variety you have with your light, medium, and darks, the better it looks. I've thrown lights in here and they can be scattered out throughout. Like this one would actually call, qualify as kind of a light. This one's definitely a light. These are, you know, they're, they're lighter than a brown paper bag. And you, you just sprinkle them through. Now you're gonna need 32 of these at two inches by three and a half inches. If you're going with a two and a half by four and a half, you only need 18 bricks to make a 12 and a half inch block. But let me show you how this is constructed. And it's easier actually to do two at a time. That's why, good luck making just one. It, they're easier to construct two at a time or on bulk than they are to just do one at a time. Now to make a twin size quilt, you only need 35 of these and they're perfect. Then you, you lay out your blocks five across and seven down. So let's get started with the sewing. Okay, so let's start putting this together. They're very simple to put together. You just line up your edges, your edges for the first one. You're gonna start and you're sew the long edge. This is the longest the longest uh, seam that you do at the beginning and you just run it through at your quarter inch all and go and this block is very forgiving but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start piecing together the ones that are going the, the short way so now I find just pressing open with my finger is enough to get this working Right? Just like that. You, just, you know, you get in there with your nail and you press it open. So now I'm going to go across and I'm going to sew this line. But I'm going to sew it from this side because I want to make sure that this seam stays open to reduce bulk. Ok. 
Okay, and, and I just take this and I finger press it open. So basically you're just working a little bit ahead. Here we go. And put these two together. Now I've done this a few different ways over the years. And these ones now, they just press out. They just, you press them out. For some reason, as long as you've got that block. So now I'm going to just line this up. And I'm sewing counterintuitively to make sure that stays open, doesn't flip on me. So now, ooh, and it just about flipped. So I just push it up. Now, the reason I'm all pressing open on some of the seams and not on others is I want the the block not to be bulky or bumpy in, in parts because sometimes that's the worst thing that can happen to a block. Now, this, like I say, it's, for some reason, it's such a forgiving, cute little block. Now, what I've also done in the past is I've just narrowed my color palette to, you know, something, you know, just a few colors. Like, I did a blue and white one where I did the white in the... Uh, I did two colors in the center. Then the next round around the, the center was... Um, uh, white row round and I put a whole bunch of different whites in and then I put you know another couple of rounds of blue it looked great by the time I was done so I think you kind of got the idea of this and how quick it's going to go together I'm, yeah there we go and you can change these up if all of a sudden you find you don't like it you know you don't quite quite like how this is all laying out but you just you can do quite a few of these without ever touching your iron, right? So, uh, now, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, there we go. This one doesn't, this sewing machine here doesn't sew as smoothly as mom's, even though it's pretty quiet. It doesn't quite do the job that mom's sewing machine does, so. There we go. You just have to reassemble the block every once in a while. There we go. And it you never, you're always crossing seams, right? So this seam doesn't match up with any of this. So this is why this goes so so quickly together. Well, now, oops, I'm gonna have to move this just a tad out of the way. Okay. Oh. There we go. And I'm just going to put these two together right away. It's a, a lovely scrappy idea. And it does go through your your scraps really quickly. And um, let's see. I think you kind of got the idea of how to, to sew all this together. So... I'm going to come back when this is all sewn together. Okay, we're ready to put the last strip on. And this, you know, like I say, it's, uh, it's it gets really eclectic very quickly, but it is a wonderful scrap buster. If you're looking for a really good, easy one, uh, easy block to take to a retreat when we're allowed to have retreats again, which I imagine we will. And... We just make sure the underneath seam is also, like you don't want to flip that open because it will create bulk in your block. And when you go to quilt it, all of a sudden you hit this great big bump. And it sometimes will, it depends how fast you're quilting, it might break your needle. So, let me just, I'm just going to get this off and now I'm going to show you 
I have another block here, and I'm going to show you how they're put together. So, I haven't touched this with an iron yet, by the way, in case you're wondering. I will, before I put it. So, here is the block. Now you got four across, right, on both top and bottom. Now, when you're putting this block together, your next four cross goes up against the the three and the two ends. So you have no seams to match up. There's none of this, oh I have to nest, I have to do this. No. Yeah, no, you don't. You just you just keep building your blocks together. Now when I have made this pattern before, what I have done is I have left this round white or variations of low volume and then the rest color. And that also it gives the block a definition. There's something, oh that's where the block starts. And then it goes off into this lovely crazy scrappiness. But these are great for kids and they're great uh, they're great for children that, okay, play I Spy. Where's the tiger? Well here's the tiger, here's the flower. Now this is one thing I'm going to show you about this block. What I made a rule when I started doing these is I wasn't going to put the same fabric in a block. For me, in my head, it was too close. And then I thought about it. I was like, no, I don't have to. So here is the same fabric. This one and this one. I don't know if you can see that really well. This one and this one here are the same fabric. But because that fabric was such large scale, it doesn't even look like the same fabric. It doesn't look like it's coming from the same piece of cloth. But trust me, it is. It's just a larger scale. And this is where, this is the block, kind of block you can use, where you buy it or you get it from a friend or you get it in a scrap bag because you buy them because they call your name in the quilt store. And you get it home, you open your scrap bag and there's fabric in there that you don't know what color it really is. So it's like, it's got all the colors but you're not sure. This is the perfect quilt for it because you're cutting the pieces small enough, it doesn't matter. Now I'm going to put the cutting instructions here for the two inch by three and a half inch and I'm also going to put cu cutting and sewing instructions in for the two and a half by four and a half. I haven't shown you the larger one. If you want to see the larger one, put it in your comments below and uh, this is perfect. Perfect scrap buster for you. So I ho hope this helps you conquer your amount scrap more. And I really went through my scrap boxes. I went from five boxes down to three and I ended up with an entire shoe box full of uh, two inch by three and a half inch squares right here. So it's going to be fun doing these blocks. And remember, I only need 35 to make a quilt. We'll explain the quilt math to you in another another episode. Okay, I want you to have a great day, have a fun week, and see you back next time. Bye! If you have questions about what you saw in this video, or you have ideas for content, or something you want to see us do, please put those comments in the description below. But also, while you're there, like, share, and subscribe with your friends. That would really help us out. Okay, I want to thank you and have a great day.